Welcome to another edition of Around the Horn with Ben McKee. I'm Brent Hubbs, VolQuest.com, Tennessee on the road in Lexington, Kentucky. Their first Thursday, Friday, Saturday series of the year in league play in Tennessee Falls in the Thursday night season series opener to Kentucky 3-2 in 13 innings. Ben, just not a good night at the ballpark for Tennessee at the plate. Um, just they could not get anything generated at all. Missed golden opportunities early, and then Kentucky's bullpen down the stretch was great. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, even Tennessee's bullpen was great, although it did have to work out of some jams that it created for itself. But the story of the night was Tennessee's offense. They had plenty of opportunities uh, to put Kentucky away early. You, you strand the bases loaded three straight innings to, to start the game. And uh, you, you feel like if you take advantage there, then you don't give Kentucky hope. But you give Kentucky hope. Kentucky then hits two solo home runs off of Chase Burns in the fourth inning. And then it's a 2-2 game for literally the entire rest of the night until Kentucky walks Tennessee off there in the bottom of the 13th inning. I, I, I don't know what the deal was. I, I think part of it is, is just the longevity of a, a long baseball season. I, I know people aren't going to want to hear this, but you, you play 60 games or about that number guaranteed, and then you have 10, 15 games of postseason. If Tennessee's able to have a postseason run like they were last year, you play 70 games, you're going to have three, four, five, a handful of games like this tonight to where the approach is sloppy, uh, the the appearances at the plate, the at-bats are, are just sloppy and, and where nothing goes your way. And this is the, the second time this year it's happened to Tennessee. The other night that it felt like this was the Woodback game at Smoky Stadium against Tennessee Tech, just couldn't really get anything going. And, and I almost wonder, Brent, if all of the Kentucky walks to start the game, Kentucky starter – uh, gave up six walks, which tied a career high for him. I almost wondered if, if that kind of threw off the the approach at the plate uh, because they're seeing so many balls, so many balls. And then Kentucky has their top relievers come in and, and they're pounding the zone with strikes. I almost wonder if that threw them off in, in a weird way because they were able to get some hits early. They were able to get on base. And, and although they weren't able to drive them in with runners in scoring position, at least they were getting guys on base. And then the, the starter for Kentucky leaves – and nobody can get on base the the entire rest of the game. I, I don't know the exact numbers in, in front of me or off the top of my head, but uh, when Jarrell Ortega singled in the 11th inning, I believe that was Tennessee's first hit since the third inning, the fifth inning, something crazy like that. Uh, if not first hit, then it was – Tennessee didn't have a base runner in scoring position after the third or fifth inning, something crazy like that, just ugly numbers. I believe 14, 16 runners left on base for the night. Uh, just terrible in, with runners in scoring position. So it, it was ugly tonight. But I would be surprised if when we look back on the weekend as a whole that, that we're talking about a Tennessee team that struggled the entirety of the weekend. I'm willing to give Tennessee some grace and just say it, it's one of those games over the course of a long season. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, it happens in baseball where things don't go your way. My one concern, I, I just didn't like their uh, approach to the plate tonight. And, and and I'm not a baseball expert, but lots of pop outs, lots of swinging out of their shoes. They, they didn't seem to go with the pitch a whole lot, try to put the ball in play from time. Kentucky won by just getting the ball in play um, in, in the final inning. I mean, Tennessee looked like, and I know Kentucky hit the two home runs, a lot of hard hit balls didn't get out of the yard that looked like they might. Tennessee looked like they were swinging for the yard. And I know there's all the talk about the home run record this week and all those things just look like Tennessee's approach at the plate was to try to mash it over the fence and, and not necessarily go with pitches when guys were making good pitches after the Kentucky starter was out of the game. I completely agree with you. That, that would be my one critique is that they did not make adjustments at the plate and, and whether you have it going on or, or whether it's just one of those nights you can still make adjustments and, and try to correct your night. And Tennessee didn't seem to do that. I think you'll see a different minded Tennessee team these next two days. It, it was interesting just talking to the Kentucky SID up in the press box of Kentucky itself with this new ballpark that came into uh, in 2019. They had to change their philosophy of, of kind of how they recruit and, and the style of play that they want to play because at night balls don't fly out of here. I mean, in the gaps, the, the balls die, uh, even down down the right field line. Drew Gilbert hit one that off the bat I thought was a home run. Jordan Beck hit one off the bat that I thought was a home run. Jordan Beck made a terrific snag that saved the game for Tennessee, and I don't know how that ball that he caught wasn't a home run off of Ben Joyce. There were a lot of balls that died tonight, 
and it seemed like Tennessee didn't recognize or recognize too late that, hey, we, we can't have the same approach that we have at Lindsey Snow- Lindsay Nelson Stadium where the ball flies out of the stadium much easier. Here, the ball does not fly, especially at night. The air, whatever it is, the, the ball just does not fly out of here. And uh, I'm sure Tennessee recognized that in the later innings. But at that point, they were so much in a funk that I, I don't know that it mattered what you tried to adjust at the plate just because you are already in a funk. So, Brent, I, I completely agree with you there. In totality, in terms of being worried about this team going forward, my previous answer will speak to that. I'm not that concerned. But that would be my critique for tonight. They, they failed to make adjustments and recognize too late that they're not going to be able to win this game off of, of home runs just because of how this stadium is kind of constructed. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no panic. I mean, for the for this baseball team and where they're at, they're, we've talked about it all year. They're not going to go undefeated. They had an opportunity tonight to kind of step on Kentucky's throat early. They couldn't get the the hit that they wanted uh, or that they needed in those first three innings to really distance themselves the way they should have. I mean, they jumped on had a chance to jump on Kentucky and didn't do it. They let Kentucky hang around and and it cost them a game tonight. Move on to the next game. That's my question. Moving on to the next game, a lot of pitchers used. Obviously, in a 13-inning affair, Redmond Walsh threw a ton of pitches tonight. Uh, what do you think about it? I mean, I would assume he's done for the weekend. What, is, what does Tennessee look like um, with, with Blade Tw- Tidwell starting tomorrow and kind of what's available for Tennessee after all the arms that were used tonight? I, I would be surprised if Redmond pitches again this weekend. I, I don't know what his final pitch count was, but he threw a lot of pitches, to, to your point, and, and he looked great. Uh, and – as a separate note, it's not like Kentucky played great baseball tonight either. I mean, it's a shame that it took them until the 13th inning to walk Tennessee off. Tennessee kept giving them chance after chance after chance. I think it was five straight innings, including the 13th when they walked it off, that Kentucky had the winning run on second or third. Five straight innings. And Tennessee hadn't had a one, two, three inning since the eighth inning. So Tennessee's bullpen was good tonight, but it also wasn't perfect. It, it was just an ugly baseball game that I'm sure Tony Vitello can't wait to flush. But uh, tomorrow, pitching-wise, I think Chase Dolan is going to be the first guy out of the bullpen. Uh, I, I think he's going to piggyback Blake Tidwell. Blake Tidwell's not 100% built back up to where he could go throw a complete game if he had it really going on. Um, Chase Dolander only misses two starts, but there's still somewhat of a buildup. Chase admitted that on Tuesday after the Alabama A&M game when he finally got um, back on the mound for the first time in 17 days. So to me, connecting the dots, I think it's played Tidwell and then Chase Dolander piggybacking uh, Tidwell on the mound. And if for some reason that doesn't work or those two guys are struggling, uh, Will Mabry didn't throw a ton, so he could come back. Uh, Tony Vitello talked as if Ben Joyce were able to pitch tomorrow, but I, I think that had to be a late game situation, extra innings type of situation for him to pitch or or come in and get a guy or two. You still have Kirby Cannell, um, Mark McLaughlin. He's probably done for the weekend. I I think that at some point, unless Blade Tidwell, Chase Dolander, Drew Beam on Saturday just completely shut everything down and you don't have to use your bullpen, I think we might see Xander Seacrest uh, this weekend for the first time in legitimate SEC action. So uh, in terms of tomorrow, we'll see what Saturday holds. But I I think tomorrow's the, the Blade Tidwell and Chase Dolander show. Got to ask you any word on Camden Sewell. He w- he was pitching well and obviously tweaked something or felt something a little bit uncomfortable. They get him out of the game. Any vibe from, from that? He's been really good for Tennessee in middle relief. Uh, I- any thoughts on him from the from the locker room post game tonight? Tony did not seem worried uh, when we spoke to him post game. Tony just taking the cautious pr- approach as this staff does. They're always going to be overly cautious, and uh, he he kind of joked that. Camden's probably mad at him for pulling him in that situation because if, I'm assuming you could see on the broadcast I did not see it but Tony referenced it that Camden was saying hey I, I can get this last batter let, let me get this last guy and he did de- he, he did seem pretty adamant on the mound that he could stay in the game and get that last hitter so it uh, seemed like it was just something that they were being overcautious about uh, Tony said that uh, they thought it was an oblique at first but then they got into the dugout and they were looking a little higher uh, it, it was on his throwing shoulder, neck, back in that area. Uh, I I didn't go to uh, medicine school or or whatever. Uh, So I I went to journalism school. So I'll leave that to Jeff Wood, the trainer for Tennessee baseball. But it it seems fine. Uh, It seems like he'll be okay, and they're just being cautious. 
Tennessee's been a terrific team after a loss. They bounced back very well. We'll see how they bounce back tomorrow. You know the middle of that hitting order uh, is, is spitting nails right now. I don't know that they've had a game this season where – and I may be wrong that they didn't go over. They might have got a hit in there that I'm un- unaware of. But but I don't think they, I don't think they got anything done uh, other than drawing some walks tonight. You know they're going to be back ready to go uh, on Friday night because that's just that's not who they've been all season long. Nobody's done that to them the way Kentucky's relievers did to, to them to uh, on Thursday night. Yes, I I mean it. Trey Lipscomb looked lost at the plate. Um, Jordan Beck. I think he had a better night than than the box score shows. I, I still don't know how that ball he hit the dead center uh, didn't leave the ballpark. But the the Kentucky guy in the press box was saying that only five players have hit uh, a home run to dead center field since the ballpark opened in 2019. So again, that was just more of a ballpark issue. But I mean, he caught it flush off the bat, and I, I think it just kind of died, um, which speaks to the ballpark considering it was Mike Honcho who hit the ball. But uh, Drew Gilbert. Didn't look good, although I also thought that his ball, that he hit the right field, I thought that one was gone off the bat too. So middle lineup wasn't good. Luke did not have a good night. Evan Russell did not have a good night. But uh, I'd be surprised if there's not an adjustment, not necessarily mechanically with their swing, but mentally with the philosophy at the plate. They're they're not going to be able to walk into this ballpark and and just slug their way to a series win. This ballpark's not going to allow that to happen. So they're going to have to adjust. Uh, their approach at the plate and adjust mentally and come back tomorrow and try to get it done a different way than they're used to. We'll see how they adjust. We'll see how Tennessee's pitching holds up as again, when you go 13 innings, you use a lot of, a lot of arms and a lot of pitches. So we'll see exactly what that looks like uh, Friday night in Lexington, Kentucky. We'll have full coverage of that coming up uh, later tonight as Tennessee gets a short break and then back to the ballpark And then obviously Saturday afternoon to wrap up the series. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Round the Horn as Tennessee loses the series opener on this Thursday night extra inning affair, 3-2 to the Kentucky Wildcats in Lexington. For Ben McKee, I'm Brent Hubbs, ballquest.com.